All right, it's Brendan Raftery getting his final checkup to get ready to head into the cage. We'll go ahead and take a look at our tail of the tape for this fight right here. Age advantage, one to Brendan Raftery, even on the height, one pound weight advantage, three pound reach advantage in the favor of Brendan Raftery. How is all those gonna play into the mix? We are gonna find out here in just a few minutes as Brendan Raftery getting his final checkups before he gets ready to head into the cage here. At these lower weights, this is 135. Uh, you know, this is fast action. It's hard to call these fights because stuff happens so quick. So <laughs> They're uh, speedy. Yeah, jo Joaquin Calderon is out of uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu Le Legacy MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is scheduled for three five minute rounds in the Front Street Fights Bantam Weight Division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands in here tonight at five feet, seven inches tall, weighing in at 134 and one half pounds, representing Gracie Jiu-Jitsu and Legacy MMA with a record of six wins against one defeat. From Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, Joaquin Calderon. And his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the blue corner. Standing in at five feet, eight inches tall. He weighs in at an even 135 pounds. Stepping into tonight's ring with a record of four wins against one defeat. He represents SBG Idaho from Boise, Idaho. I give you Brendan Raftery. Our referee for this bout will be Mr. Rulin Day. All right, Mitch, here we go with it. Three rounds, five minutes apiece, Joaquin Calderon and Brendan Raftery. An advantage weight fight here, which as you mentioned, we're gonna see a lot of fast-paced action here. Touching the gloves, sign of respect. Respect and sportsmanship, and we've seen a lot of that tonight, which is what you'd like to see on all levels of the fight game. Joaquin looks a lot more flat-footed. And, uh, Seems to be a lot more calm in his demeanor, too. That might not be the best thing for him, you know, because being lighter on your feet really helps out uh, Brendan, you know, moving in and out for striking in, in the, ra the range Going and the distance. Going for a couple lower left leg kicks there. Connects with one, misses with the other. Nice body kick and a couple of flurries of rights and lefts by both opponents. Yeah, but hard body nice kick. Catch. Joaquin catches the leg, able to get Brendan in the ground. Good thinking and good moving Look by for Brendan. An ankle lock right now from, from Joaquin. Able to avoid that right off the bat. He saw it coming on his way down, able to avoid that ankle lock. Joaquin's corner is calling for a leg lock because there, there was a leg lock there for uh, on Brendan's uh, left leg. If he leaves it out there too long. And also on his right leg. And for those of you following along live, hopefully we do have the stream back up and running soon. On Twitter, we'd like to uh, encourage you to use the hashtag Calderon versus Raftery. Let us know what you're thinking of the fight so far. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys and be able to share some of your teeth with us on the air tonight. Great lower uh, lower body strength there by Brendan able to, to lift Joaquin there a little bit. Brendan's kind of a little bit in a predicament because his right leg is totally across there. You know, that's not optimal. And, and, and with Joaquin's powering in on him like that, it's really hard to exit to remove your leg. But if, if Brennan moved his head to the right, he could potentially ankle lock Joaquin as well on Joaquin's left leg. And to me, it looks right now, Brennan almost seems to be in total control, able to ma manipulate Joaquin's body to try to escape here is really what he needs to work on to do. Well, he might be in control. However, you know, the round is, the round is, uh, is, is uh, starting to come to halfway right now. And, uh, and the judges just see Joaquin on top and landing a few shots. So honestly, this is bad for Brennan. Brendan and uh, Joaquin is is getting the advantage with the referees. Couple about right hands. Good couple right hands there from Joaquin Calderon. As we approach just about two minutes, 45 seconds left in round number one. And like I said before, see, Brendan's right leg going all the way across the stomach of Joaquin is is not the best, but look, watch for an ankle lock. Able right to here. escape, watch he's for going for the ankle lock too. That almost got him on the initial takedown. Joaquin coming back with a couple of hard rights going there for a knee too. Bar. There. Now he moved the, the leg across. It's a lot better for him. 
And you got to give props there to Joaquin there. Saw what was coming, able to maneuver, and fend it off at least for a few minutes. Half guard. This is actually called quarter guard mount because he's he's not half guard. He's almost mount. And, but because his leg is trapped, that's actually called quarter guard mount. Good stiff right shot there. Joaquin and he, needs and he's landed about four or five of those. Joaquin needs to look to, to, to get some posture and start landing some blows because he's on top and he can drop. There's some... There's some elbow shivers. The corner's asking for elbows. And see, like I said before, these might not Misses really be the right hand damaging, there. but you know, this is what the referees see is he's scoring. Nice little sweep. And there he is. Brendan able to counter it. Both fighters getting back to their feet. You've got to applaud Brendan for holding in there, able to get back to his feet and maybe work on his game now a little bit. Yeah, you know, I think he sensed some urgency. He's only got a minute and a half left to kind of put the stamp on the judges, right? You know, and, and prove to the judges that he's the better person. Did a takedown, but it backfired on back and quarter guard mount. Now it's half guard. One minute, 20 seconds left in round number one between Joaquin Calderon and Brendan Raftery. One of the worst things to do is get taken down right next to the cage because it limits your options of, of escape, you know? And right now, Joaquin's starting to position Rafferty's head into the cage, which nullifies his hips. Joaquin's pressing forward, looking for a little bit of almost like a can opener which is when you put your hands behind the neck and you pull the chin to the to the chest, and it's kind of a cervical neck crank. Final 50 seconds here in round number one. And again, pace kind of slowed down right now. Brendan doing a good job. He spent a lot of this round on his back, able to, for the most part, kind of really hold off the offensive attack from Joaquin. Yeah, but he lost the round thus far. You know, you have 30 seconds left. I totally agree with you. He's been able to nullify a lot of the power and the damages, so you're totally right. However, he's defending everything Joaquin's been doing. So so really, he's on the defense, meaning Brennan. You know, so, so if this round closes, 20 seconds, and, uh, and, you know, I think Joaquin will have this round. As we enter the final 10 seconds here, of round number one between Joaquin Calderon and Brendan Raftery. Got to give a shout out to the amazing production crew. We have a cable one there. Uh, as you saw, the hashtag can opener. Uh, maybe that, that's how we coin your catchphrase here, Mitch, is, uh, is can opener. <laughs> hashtag can opener. Yeah, the problem with the can opener, though, is sometimes it exposes you to uh, maybe get an arm barred, like we saw with Josh Wick in the last. Because you start reaching you know, for those things, uh, it's not bueno. Yours would be hashtag can opener. Mine might be hashtag bottle opener. And this but this right here is a 50-50 guard. This is kind of a little bit of a 50-50. That's what this is called in jiu-jitsu when the legs are entangled like that. So Joaquin knows that pretty much everything, for the most part, in large part, is working in his favor right now. He's getting what he wants. Like does he before, continue see, to do the same thing? Brendan's what does Brendan have to do? Well, it seemed like Brendan's punches were, were, were real. Uh, they were coming from the outside. They weren't straight. And, uh, and Joaquin caught the, caught the kick. So what I would tell if I was his corner is I would say, hey, keep the stand up because honestly, he kind of had the edge there. He, he wasn't, meaning Brendan, wasn't, wasn't really threatening with, a, with some powerful shots like we saw in the last fight. And, uh, and, and uh, Joaquin ended up countering the kick because he caught it. So, you know, I would say, hey, your ground game is working and we can go back to that point. But you know what, keep striking. All right, here we go. The cage is set. We are ready for round number two. Referee rule on day, checking with both fighters, and we are underway. Brendan's not not bouncing as much as he was the first round, which is typical. Maybe you want to slow down just a little bit. Yeah, his corner might might have told him to be a little bit more patient and let let the let the fight kind of uh, come to you. Yeah, exactly. Brendan's corner is telling him to be first, but it seems like he's just kind of countering everything that Joaquin's been throwing. Both fighters uh, is starting off uh, a little bit safe, not wanting to, again, be the one to make the first mistake here. Joaquin trying to come in with uh, some rights and lefts there. Brendan able to step away, fend off that late kick as well. The dangerous part about, about when Brendan's getting attacked with those punches is he's, he's backing up with his chin kind of straight up. Nice low kick by Brendan. Joaquin barely missing with an overhand right there as Looking well. Looking for too. a Superman punch, but pulled back on it. Deep double underhooks. Deep double underhooks he might. There's a nice knee and a nice little head kick. Didn't really do any damage, but you know, that shows the judges something and different. And everybody watching online, we do seem to have the stream of the fights fixed, so we're back on YouTube. We appreciate everybody's patience as we work on the problem. 
Rafferty's kicks are actually going really well, but his punches are looping, and, and you know they don't have as much power, no snap on him, you know, as I've seen in the past. So there's a nice forearm shiver from uh, from Joaquin. Brendan trying to drag Joaquin down to the ground. Nice. This is really good action. A lot of people think, you know, you're not seeing punches, but, but really this is a lot of uh, technical grappling going on. Some clinch, clinch work. <laughs> nice smile by Joaquin there. It, it almost kind of seems he has a lot of confidence built up right well, now. Well, and that's kind of what I was alluding to is, you know, he's keeping his hands by his waist, probably because there's a nice little wrestling shot. Nice duck under to the back. And we're looking for a slam. Able to fend off the slam, Let's but see back the control hooks. is Joaquin's favorite. Joaquin's gonna look to try to probably take some hooks. But see how, how Joaquin is controlling a two-on-one, controlling Brendan's wrist right here. And that's what I said in the last fight. You have to control the guy's wrist when you have his back and he's trying to get up, because it's really hard to get up with one hand on the ground. You need two, so doing this kind of wrist ride is a good thing for him because, because Joaquin's just staying, staying on top, keeping his head above Brennan's and dominating the position. We are down to just over two minutes left in round number two between Joaquin Calderon, Brendan Raftery. Again, Joaquin with the control. Uh, definitely at this point, a couple of hard right hands. Like I said, tick tock, you know. The, oh, there's the hooks, there's the back. This is not the best place to be. If you're Joaquin, you kind of want to be on your side when you have the hooks. You don't want to be smashed on your back because it nullifies your hips as well. Plus his head's in the cage. So this isn't the best, the best place to be. So Joaquin needs to put his heels in Brennan's calves right here, push him away a little bit, get his head above his so he can kind of get some movement with his hips. Is it right here in front of us? Brendan trying anything he can at this point to get some control. Holding off the defense, a lot of these shots you see coming from Joaquin, not really having an effect, not really landing. There's a nice choke. He's There's got a nice the choke, choke locked in right in front That's of pretty us. deep. That's under the chin. We have a minute and a half left. Minute and a half left. Is this going to be it? Can Brendan do anything? It's in there deep. Brendan seems to be holding it off at this point. It's just getting deeper and deeper. you got to give it to Brendan Raftery. Not freaking out at this point like I am. Yeah. <laughs> what, you, what Joaquin needs to do is have patience. By him hooking his hand up on top of his shoulder, look. And able to get out of it. But see, that's that's also a place to his. See, this is a better position for Joaquin because see, now his hips can disengage. Goes for a hard body shot. Three or four rights, getting some more in there. His corner encouraging him to get him down to the ground and keep going with those blows as we enter the final 45 seconds of round number two. Look for a choke even. As, as we get to that 30 second mark. You could tell Joaquin has some good wrestling in his background because he's really doing a couple kind of, of hard right classic, knees to the body there. Classic wrestling, you know, being on top parterre position, right? And Going for the body damage. shots, trying to soften Brendan up a little bit. I think he sees it that, that, that Brendan's, Brendan's arm at is at this caught. point. Brendan's trying, but there's not a lot there right now. Now he's mounted. This is the worst position, but it's only 10 seconds left, so. So he's gonna just score. Final 10 seconds. Is Brendan gonna be able to make it to round number three? Nice, trying to roll through there as we approach the final couple of seconds here. Well, that was a dominant round put in by Joaquin. That was 100% Joaquin. There's no question about it. And I think the first round was Joaquin, to be honest with you. Brendan's, Brendan's punches are looping. They don't have any snap on him. He needs to fire him straight if he wants to stand up to be any good. And ground, ground goes 100% to Joaquin. You've got all the confidence in the world right now, just Joaquin Phoenix, or excuse me, Joaquin Phoenix. Wow, I want to go home and watch a movie, apparently. I, you know, I knew as I was looking at the script tonight, I knew at some point I had to pay attention because that might happen. Uh, <laughs> my apologies there. Uh, Joaquin Calderon, two rounds in the book in his favor, more than likely, you would, you would have to assume. Definitely round number two, almost for sure number one. He's got all the confidence in the world going into round number three. Brendan, at this point, can't allow this one to go to the distance. What is he going to have to do to win this fight? Well, I don't know. You know, I, I'd say the slight advantage goes to his kicking, but now he's going to be more tired because he just spent five minutes of carrying Calderon's weight the whole time. So, you know, it's going to be a Hail Mary. He doesn't even have uh, superior grappling, as you've seen. So, you know, Brendan has a big mountain to climb in front of him. You know, I do not discount him, and, you know, it's a fight and anything can happen, but, you know, this just might be more of the same. 
All right, here we go. We are underway with the third and final round between Joaquin Calderon and Brendan Raftery. And again, Brendan starts off the, the rounds fairly confident. Joaquin, very loose and ready to go at this point. Good right hand there as uh, Joaquin came in there for the lower leg kick. It's Brendan good right hand, right. but it, I mean, it's good timing, but there's no snap to that. And that's why Calderon's just waiting in with his hands down because he's not afraid. And you see the expression in his face. You put it perfectly. He's yeah. not afraid. He's he's luring Brendan in. He knows he's going to get what he wants. Almost maybe kind of toying with him at this point. Yeah, I think he's pretty confident at this at this point in the fight. You know, he feels like, okay, I've seen everything this guy has. And uh, it's almost like... Brendan's a little bit too uh, um, reserved in his attacks. He needs to pump up the pace, get back to bouncing in and out and peppering him. One minute into this third round, Brendan playing a pretty conservative, which is probably smart, because at some point he's going to have to throw that Hail Mary, get in there and unload. Yeah, but now you have four minutes. And once again, you know, fatigue starts to set in. And uh, Brendan needs to look for some more leg shots, leg kicks. If he can start kicking the legs, and make Calderon think something different, maybe even an uppercut, because Calderon is coming in with his head down and, and with his hands down. So I would look for low leg kicks and, uh, and uppercuts to change the pace. Three and a half minutes left. And again, Joaquin just toying with Brendan at this point. He's on cruise control. He doesn't really see the need to, to push the action as far as like, as far as, you know, he's not desperate. And he's just in there toying around and actually just racking up experience. And again, more of the same as we mentioned, Joaquin's just letting Brendan dictate the pace. And he gets that takedown again, which is exactly what he's been looking for these first two rounds. Back to wrist riding, back to more of the same like we talked about. Now there's three minutes in the round, and Brendan has to be getting desperate at this point. One would have to assume that at any point now, as you mentioned, Brendan's going to have to, A, get out of the ground game, the holds that Joaquin's been putting on the entire fight and as you know, has been fairly unsuccessful at it. And he's he's gonna have to go for a submission or a knockout at this point, no question. Yeah, but you know, I don't even know if Joaquin will let him up. You know, we'll see. See wrist riding, he's still on top. Brendan trying to go for a roll through, but that backfires on him a little bit as well. And Joaquin, again, in complete control. Wrist riding, landing more shots. Those fists are coming in. Imposing his will, at least Ref controlling one arm and keeping his head above, above Brendan's. Referee rule on day, making sure, of course, that Brendan's safety is priority number one. Still able to defend himself, going to let the, the fight continue to go. But you got to you got to think at some point that this one's going to close to be close to being done, and this may be the point as we get to the final one minute and 45 seconds. It's just nothing that Brendan can do at this point. Joaquin. Just yeah. And, and to be and to be fair, you know, to to Brendan, you know, Joaquin's punches, you know, although they're they're coming He's through, landing they, a lot of them. They're not they're not as damaging as you know what you would see, you know, in other people Quantity either. Over quality. Right, you know, so it's like they both don't have a lot of snap on their punches, but but uh, Joaquin's punches are are almost uncontested. We are down to the final one minute and 15 seconds. And this is the position I was telling you about. When you have somebody's back, you don't want to be on your back because he's laying on top of your hips, which takes away all your options. Which Not to mention the weight, too. At some well, point. yeah, that basically just limits you to a hand fight battle right now. So as long as Rafferty can, can control at least one arm, then he's not afraid of really getting choked. So, you know, he's doing kind of the right thing, but also tick tock. Exactly. We're down to the final 50 seconds here between Joaquin Calderon and Brendan Raftery. One would have to assume if this fight goes the distance, we the outcome's all but written at this point. Yeah, I would say 100% uh, unanimous decision to Joaquin. He's got one hook in on the back, and he's just doing a good job of keeping his head above Brendan's. And, and no matter what happens in the, the, the final 30 seconds, you got to credit where credit is due for Brendan. As, as tough as this fight's been for them, he has not given up. He has been through some... You know, right in front of us, you saw uh, he had the uh, the chokehold there, was able to fight through that as well, too. But this is, uh, you know, way different than watching, uh, you know, Jesse Brock or, or Cesar Scalavos. You know, uh, these guys are not as quick and not as snappy, you know, and that's just the only difference. Final 10 seconds, Joaquin was trying to go for a crucifix there, and he's just going to let him up. 
as this one comes to an end between Brendan Raftery and Joaquin Calderon. Nice show of sportsmanship there at the end. And, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about that, too, what you like to see at the end of the, the, end of the fight. Yeah, you know, these guys are professional. When you get emotions involved, uh, that's not the best. You know, this is not an emotional thing. It should not be an emotional thing. You know, these are uh, trained fighters, and, and this is a sport. It's a skill. Well, as we wait for these scorecards to make its way over to ring announcer Brit Talbert, two more fights coming our way, a main and a co-main. Brendan's corner has a uh, camo uh, fanny pack on, so, you know. <laughs> Keeps up with the theme there, man. Yeah. Camo anything at this point. Nice little, I don't even really know what to call that, kind of a half souple. But, uh, yeah, that was good. And then back to that wrist writing is what we were talking about. This was basically, what you're watching here is what happened for the last two rounds. Speaking of camo, I'll have to talk to the production crew. Maybe we can get a camo headset for the next fight. So that'd be kind of cool. That'd be nice. We'll start on profile on this one. As we await the judge's decision, coming up, we have the co-main event between Jacob Jokula and Scott Tomets. That's going to be an exciting one. Uh, Scott Tomets putting up two incredible fights in a row here inside Central Link Arena. One with Front Street Fights 5, the other with RFA 27. And, of course, the main event, the debut at heavyweight for Colton, the Madman Bond, going against Luis Cortez. That could be a knockdown drag out one as well, too. Oh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one, you know. That's going to come up uh, real soon. and. And, but but ahead of that, we have, you know, Colton Vaughn. We have Scott Tomitz, you know, a lot of really good, tough fighters. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to this ending of the card. All right, well, let's see what the judges score this one as we go inside the cage with ring announcer Britt Talbert. Scorecards. How about a nice round of applause for these two warriors right here once again? Here we go. And we have a unanimous decision. All three judges ring Scott. Scored about 30 to 27. Improving his record to 7 and 1 from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, Joaquin Calderon. We're going to visit with Joaquin Calderon, and, and obviously you make the trip down here. First of all, tough fight, really strategic, a lot of jits. Talk about the fight. It was, it was fun. He's a hard guy to take down and roll around with. It's pretty hard to get a submission on him, so I really have to work on that. It's your first time down to Front Street Fights, correct? Yes, it is. You'd come back? Oh, yeah. What's next for Joaquin Calderon? You're not a local guy. What, what's next on your fight card? What do you want to do? Uh, get as many fights as I can, wherever I can. That's usually what I do. You, you come down with a huge entourage here. You got one guy in your corner. Who do you want to thank to make this possible? My family for always supporting me. My friend Carlos for always being there for me. He's actually a medic in the military. So that's why he's here being my corner, fixing me up. And obviously, God. Right on, ladies and gentlemen, Joaquin Calderon, our winner here. We've got a swag bag here from our friends at bodybuilding.com. We thank Joaquin for coming down from Coeur d'Alene to join us here on Front Street Fight 6. Ladies and gentlemen, Joaquin Calderon. Thank, thank you, everyone, for cheering on me, even though I'm not from here. Thank you.